The Arnold girls have certainly made a name for themselves in the world of dance, with three of the four girls competing on reality television dance show competitions. Their lives have been a ballroom whirlwind. When you meet Mindy Arnold, you will see where the girls' drive and determination comes from. We talk family, dancing, motherhood, and get the scoop on a possible reality TV show based on this incredibly talented family. Enjoy my conversation with Mindy Arnold. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Oh, I'm honored. I'm so excited. This is so fun. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing we mamas love more than talking about our kids, right? Seriously. I could do it all day long. Does it still amaze you? I know you guys have kind of been in the throes of the dancing world and everything for a while now, but does it surprise you just kind of how fascinated people have become with not only your girls, but your entire family? Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's crazy. So we just had the Dancing with the Stars tour show here in Salt Lake City, which is our hometown. And I mean, talk about a theater full of mega fans. These, these women, men, young, old, all ages are just so excited to see our family, to see the girls. Um, it's, it does kind of, it doesn't surprise me, but it also, it's just, they're just my girls. And we just, don't really think, you know, they, my girls don't even think of themselves as celebrities. We just live really normal lives and every once in a while get super dressed up and do really cool things, but mostly just, you know, live really normal lives and just do regular things all the time. And so it's really fun to be in an environment where they're, you know, recognized and people are so excited. And my girls love it. They love to take pictures and to meet fans. They don't, it never is irritating or bothersome. They love it. So tell me a little bit just kind of about yourself and what you were doing before becoming a mom. What did you study yeah. in school? I know you met your husband at BYU, right? Yes. Yes. So the the biggest question I always get asked is, were you a dancer? And I was not a dancer growing up. I actually grew up showing Arabian horses oh. at a very competitive level. My family, we show horses all over the country and up in Canada. I won two national titles. Like we were really into it. I mean, we didn't, it wasn't just like go in the backyard, hop on the horse. And I mean, we were like, I spent hours a day training. I would go to training camps in Texas and Louisville and I would, you know, train with the best and we had the best horses and all the things. So I, I went through this experience and I always say it's very similar to dance because with minus the horses, of course, but just the, the level of commitment and the work ethic and the training and the, what it took to get to that level, I was very familiar with. Um, I met Josh at BYU. He, my husband, he was there on a football scholarship. So he also grew up in a very, um, you know, very high structured competitive world where he wanted to be the best and was always working towards that. He was in lots of um, different sports, but football was the one that got him a college degree and he was able to play at a D1 school and he started all four years. He was a very good player. He won lots of awards. And so we both, when we met, we were both very much two people that were used to um, working hard to obtain things at a higher level. And so I think starting our family, that was always kind of our approach was that if we're going to do something, we're going to do it well, and we're going to really put the effort into it. And so um, I went to school, I got my master's degree in physical therapy. I worked as a physical therapist off and on through my whole married life. I loved that I was able to do that while my husband went to school. I was able to support our family and I was able to do, you know, and it was a very rewarding career. So I love that. Um, my husband is a PA. He's a family practice PA and he has his own practice and he um, has been doing that for 25 years now. We just uh, kind of both grew up doing things at a high level and working hard to achieve our dreams. And so the fact that we pass it on to our kids is not really a surprise. It's just, that's kind of how we knew we would raise our children. Yeah. Um, no matter what path the girls had decided to take, they were probably yeah. would have worked that hard toward, yeah. you know, whatever the, the um, pursuit may have been. Yeah. And, and as parents, I've always been a huge proponent of keeping your children busy keeping them active and involved in something that's important to them where they have goals and things that they have to look forward to because it's going to keep them out of trouble. It's going to want them to keep their bodies healthy. It's going to want, they're going to want to be good students so they don't get things taken away from them. They want to be the best versions of themselves because they want to be successful in what they're doing and, and just keeping kids busy, I think is, is a 
very important thing. And, and, you know, and as a mom, I had girlfriends that were like, you're crazy. You're always in your car driving your kids all over the place. What, like, you know, I have tennis league or I have my golf group or I have my little book club. I don't have time to take my kids to all these places. You know, they're, they're fine. They can just focus on school at home. And I'd always just be like, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. But in my heart, I knew I was doing the right thing and it paid off in spades. Obviously it was worth all the carpooling and driving and, you know, family vacations we never took because we were doing dance competitions that right. it, was worth, it was absolutely worth it. So yeah, I, I agree so much. And there's so many situations I've seen as the mother of boys in particular that, um, you know, idle time is not a healthy thing. When, no. you're, when you're raising kids and teenagers. And so, you know, not to the point where it adds in, adds anxiety and stress, but exactly. when it's healthy busyness and activities and things that stimulate their mind or, you know, perhaps with um, my sons and sports and being stronger in general, it was always a good thing. Like, yeah, I never yeah. felt like we took on too much, even though we did all the sports, you know, we did all the things. Yeah. They didn't have time to make bad choices, honestly. Oh, no, they were too tired. <laughs> we're too busy and too tired and they had things coming up that they were excited about and getting ready for. So right. why would you ruin that by doing something foolish that would make it so that you couldn't do that thing or make you sick or make you not feel your best? You know, mm-hmm. just like keep yourself healthy. When did you first notice, I guess it would have been with Lindsay, but like this knack for either entertaining or specifically dance or whatever her personality was? So I started Lindsay uh, in dance. We were living in Iowa at the time and I put her in a little ballet class because mostly just to like, she had lots of energy. She, you know, really got sick of being at home. So I, I thought, well, dance is fun. I cheered in high school and college. So I did have some level of dance experience and performance experience I learned. Um, and I knew, I knew that, you know, I had this cute daughter. I thought she probably really liked dance and she did. Um, she, she loved it immediately, but she, it was funny because she didn't love, she had a little bit of separation anxiety. So I would have to sit there at the dance class. And sometimes the teacher would even have to bring a chair and let me sit in the room. Cause she would, she's fine as long as I was there, which is so funny because at the time it was as a mom, I was like, Oh my goodness, girl, like maybe dance isn't for you. Maybe we shouldn't do this. If you can't do a class without mom sitting in the room, maybe we shouldn't do this, but I'm glad I didn't say that. I'm glad I stuck it out. And it only took a few months for her to get to the point where she she knew she was going to be fine and I would come back and pick her up. Um, it wasn't until she was probably about seven or eight that I realized that she was super talented. But I realized, I'm like, wow, she is actually really talented and her teachers would say so. And, um, and I could tell that she loved to be on stage and she loved performing. But even then, I didn't have any idea that it would become what it has become, but we Mm -hmm. stuck with it. And by that time I had had my second daughter, Jensen. And when she was about three, did the same thing, put her in dance. And she also immediately took to it and was very, um, just, you know, kind of just shown, they just kind of would shine on stage and would just really love being in the spotlight. And I think that's a huge part of dancing because if you can't, if you don't like to perform and you don't like to get on stage and do your thing, then that, that's going to be a problem. So yeah, sure. both girls were that way. Um, yeah. So we just kept adding classes and, you know, a few more hours here and there as they got better and better and older. At what point did it become competitive? Um, so Lindsay was competing. Um, she started ballroom competitions at age nine. Oh. And then she also danced with a dance group where they would do these jazz convention competitions. Um, but the ballroom started at age nine and ballroom is a whole other animal like you you can put your kid in in a data dance studio and have him take a few classes but ballroom is you have a partner you have private coaching you have separate rehearsals you know from dance you have to find your own place to practice you have the costuming you travel to the competitions because they're all over the country and so you kind of make a commitment at that point that you're gonna really go for this and she after about a year of just kind of playing around with that, we realized she was very good at this and she really liked it. And so we really, um, we kept doing the other things, the other styles of dance and kept doing the jazz and the ballet and everything. But we really, really pushed the ballroom because it, and, and it was funny because my husband will say to this day, that's his most favorite, um, form of dance. He loved going to the ballroom competitions because he thought that was, you know, 
that was more exciting and more fun to watch than sitting through a jazz competition and watching all the other teams, you know. And it was really the hard work with ballroom that ended up paying off for her, right? Yes, yes. And 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 I think also that they had the other styles of dance that they were doing at the same time. They didn't just quit everything and just focus on ballroom. Mm-hmm. They had the, this well-rounded, um, you know, ability to do all styles of dance. I think that's why they've been so successful in their jobs and the things they've done is because they had all of the different um types of dance. I'm not sure why we didn't think about this sooner, but we have been sprinkling Coat Defense's daily preventative powder on Tucker's dog bed, and both he and his bed stay fresher. We love this daily powder that acts like a dry shampoo and works to eliminate odor and repel dirt. With all the rain we've had this spring, I hate that wet dog smell, and Coat Defense combats odors with a chemical-free formula that prevents the yeast that causes a stinky dog. I think you'll love this powder, and you can try it for 15% off by using code MAMA15 when you check out at CoatDefense.com. At one point, did you have all four girls in dance at the same time? Oh, yes. I mean... (laughs) So when Lindsay was 13, we just really felt like this, where we were at in life, the studio we were at, we weren't getting um, quite what we wanted out of it. And there had been some teachers at that studio that were kind of wanting to venture out on their own. And so at that time, my husband and I decided to open up a dance studio. And let me tell you, <laughs> that was a huge undertaking. Um, no regrets. And I, I really think that because of that decision, my girls were able to achieve the success that they have. Not that you have to open up a dance studio for your kids to achieve it, but it really was, it provided us an opportunity to um, direct our kids' dance path and, and make sure they were always being trained with the right coaches and they were going to the right competitions. And we did a lot of stage shows back then where we'd invite professionals like Mark Ballas and Derek Huff and Julianne Huff and Chelsea Hightower would come in and do shows with our kids. So our kids were surrounded by greatness all the time and had access to these people choreographing for them and watching them perform and then performing alongside of them on stage. And it was a really um, great way to just get the, our kids the exposure they needed and not just go to a competition every weekend and you know perform in front of judges all the time. It was about performing for, you know, an audience and in, in, in with greatness, like having people around you that were fantastic dancers and people. And so, um, the studio really helped um, me develop relationships with people that really helped us along the way later in life to get opportunities for the girls. It helped the girls realize that there's this big dance world out there and it's not just about going to a, you know, a convention center and, you know, Salt Lake and, and dancing on stage in front of judges. There's so much more to dance. I had three girls competing and performing. Riley was just a baby. So she was, you know, in the car seat going along to all this stuff. It was a crazy time. And I'll tell you, if I hadn't had the husband that I had, the supportive husband and father that I had, there's no way I would have been able to do what we did. And he was, even though he was a football player and a jock, he embraced dance and he's the best girl daddy ever. He just supported and you know, sometimes funded and helped as much as he could so that we could have this experience. And so we just, we really just made it our priority to make sure that our girls were getting all the um, opportunities that they could. Yeah. And did you, did you and your husband kind of sit down and have the conversation about opening a dance studio, which seems so extreme, yes. but was it because that you did see something like okay, if we nurture this and really help build this passion and surround them with greatness, I love how you said that. Yeah. I really felt like it could lead to something bigger for them. I mean, in my brain, I never imagined that we would be where we are now where I've had, my girls have all had so much success mm-hmm. and it has led to a lifestyle for them where I, I would, I mean, it, that was my wildest dreams, right? That's not I didn't, I don't think opening the studio, but it, I think it kind of played back to the idea that if we're going to do this, let's do this. Let's yeah. make sure if we're going to put our children in competitive dance and if we want them to be professional dancers, if that's what they want to be, or then let's do it full out. Let's go. Let's make sure that we're setting it up so that they're getting the best coaching, the best training, the yeah. best environment. I mean, so those years they were at the studio, I was up up front at the front desk working and 
I was with them from three to 9 PM while they were back working hard. I was up there with the snacks and the cuddles. If they needed a little side hug, you know, you're fine, go work. And so they, we were all in it together. And I think those years were so important. Looking back, those years were so important for them to develop not only a love for dance, but an appreciation for what went into them getting this opportunity. They saw me and their father working hard to make sure this happened for them. Um, and then I also just had a hand on on picking what competitions we went to. And 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 during that time, we had a lot of really great opportunities. I mean, Lindsay was Lindsay's little team was asked to go perform on Dancing with the Stars at age fifteen. She performed at you know on the show. Um, Lindsay and Jensen were able to compete on a, a dance show called Live to Dance that Paula Abdul did mm-hmm. that had us living in California for three weeks, you know, just living that life and, and learning the back, you know, behind the scenes of what goes into making a television show. And so they've had lots of experiences like that, that have molded them into the dancers and people that they are today, but we were able to do it all together. But yes, to your, to your um, previous question, I have had competitions where I've had at least three girls competing on the same day at the same competition, hair, makeup, costumes, chaos, different times, different, you know, um, by then I, by the time I had all three of them in competitive dance, Lindsay was, was out of the house and doing her thing, but she'd be there helping. And it was chaos. It was, (laughs) but it was, I mean, some of the best times of my life, right? Because we were just all in it together. Um, and just enjoying every bit of what we were doing. Yeah, that's so that's so special. I was going to ask you that, but you kind of referenced it. But I was curious, like, do you remember watching shows like um, Dancing with the Stars with the girls, and then oh. thinking about how fun that would be if one day they got oh, to be absolutely. So Dancing with the Stars um, started, and interestingly enough, two two or three of the people that were on the show initially when it very first started, and they didn't even know if it would be a big hit, had were people that had coached my girls. I'd brought them in maybe for like ballroom lessons or choreography or whatever. So from the very beginning, um, we, we avidly watched the show. Um, we were actually lucky enough throughout the years to be invited to just go down maybe once a season to go to a live taping. Like some, one of those teachers would, you know, get us two tickets or I even went down with Lindsay and her ballroom partner once and waited in line to you go down early and you stand in line out on the street and they take a, a certain, they are, they have invited guests. And then a lot of the ballroom is just filled with people who just really want to be there. And I remember being there waiting in line. And I remember them cutting the line, cutting off the line right before us and saying, I'm sorry, that's all the room we have. <laughs> and being the mama bear that I am, I found like the nicest looking like security guard I could find. And I went up to him and I said, and he still works on the show today. This oh. thing. I went up to him and I said, we came from Utah. This is, this is Lindsay and her ballroom partner. We came from Utah to see the show. Is there any way you can find us a seat inside? And he kind of looked at me and looked at Lindsay and he, he said, just a minute. And he left and I thought, well, we'll see. And he came back and said, I've got seats for you guys inside. Follow me. And we were just, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I mean, that's how much we love the show. So you think you can dance the same thing. There's been a lot of kids from Utah that have competed on that. So we would be on, on the couch watching that show, you know, just huge mega fans. So um, when Lindsay was old enough to audition, she was 18, her senior year in high school. Um, they came to Salt Lake City for auditions. And her oh, first- happy to be in Salt Lake City? Yeah. That- yeah, they they would kind of tr- they used to travel around the country and they would go to different places. And that year they just happened to come to Salt Lake. And I remember Lindsay being a little reluctant because there's always that insecurity of like, oh, mom, I'm not good enough to do that. I mean, I'm good, but like I and I'm still in high school like they, you know, because I said, well, listen, just go do it for the ex- for the experience. They're here in Salt Lake. You're 18. Go up. Give it a go. See how it see how it goes. You never know. And I mean, and then she, you know, ended up like sailing through that round and going to Vegas week and doing well. And she got on the show that year as an 18 year old girl, which was just amazing to be just straight out of high school, go straight to, so you think, and I, I often think, you know, and she'll, she'll be the first to admit, you know, my mom was the one that was like, you've, you got to go just give it a try, you know, just go see. 
But the thing about dancing is that with great reward comes great risk, right? So, so when you venture out to do big things like that, you have to set yourself up to know that you might fail and it's going to be public and everyone's going to see it. And there's going to be Instagram posts about it and people are going to comment. So I do think a lot of people hold themselves back from things because I feel like it's scary to fail. It's one thing to fail privately, but to fail publicly is hard. My daughter Jensen experienced it. Her first, um, the first time she went to um, audition for So You Think, she had been the year previous with a, she wasn't old enough, but she tried out with somebody and they gave her a ticket so that she could skip the choreography round and go straight to the judges because she was so good at 17 that they were like, come back next year. So she w- she went back and she did the same thing that her sis- older sister had done. And in her brain, she was like, they already have experienced, you know, they already showed that they're not, they're interested in me. I'm a very good dancer. I'm prepared. I already kind of know what it is. So she went into it, maybe kind of thinking, I probably got this, right? I'm going to, this is going to happen. And yeah. she made it really far, got cut at the end. And she was devastated. And then she had to live with, you know, the posts and the videos saying, well, she's just not as good as her sister or she wasn't ready or she, you know, just all the things. And, and it was really hard, you know, that's hard. It's hard to fail. Hard publicly. For you as a mom to have, to have watched that. And was there ever hesitation in you of, like you said, you know, they're taking a risk, but then if they don't make it, the heartbreak and, you know, we can't stand to see that for our children. So how did you kind of navigate It that? is, it is that there's nothing worse. I mean, as a parent, everyone, every parent will know that when you, when your child goes through something, you go through it with them. Yeah. Maybe even, maybe you even take it harder. Maybe it's mm-hmm. even harder for you to, I mean, I was heartbroken when she called me and she's like, I just got cut. If you haven't tried bare-faced skincare, let me encourage you to switch up your routine and see the difference. Use the code MAMA15 to try any products for 15% off your first purchase. You might want to check out the Jennifer's Favorites bundle. This bundle includes the Liquid Gold Vitamin C Serum and the Bare-Faced Hydrating Lotion. I use both of these twice daily and I love them. When you purchase the bundle, you will receive the travel size toning pads as a free gift with purchase. I'll put the link to order in the show notes, or you can just visit barefaced.com and search the word Jennifer. Don't forget, you can use code MAMA15 to receive that 15% off your first purchase with Barefaced. Abel offers thoughtfully designed apparel, denim, shoes, handmade jewelry, and leather bags that you can feel good about wearing. Each piece is manufactured in the communities where Abel makes an impact, including neighborhoods right here in Nashville, Tennessee, and around the world. I love that women comprise more than 90% of the staff at ABLE, and ABLE has been able to see firsthand how providing women with safe and dignified jobs has the power to change not only their families, but entire communities. Use the code MAMA20 for 20% off your first purchase site-wide when you visit ableclothing.com. And one thing we've always told our children, though, that I think is you know really important to um, to understand is that there is... I mean, we are a religious family, but even aside from being a religious family, there is, there is a reason and a purpose. Things happen for a reason. And looking back on that season, that season, they actually did. So you think a little bit different. They let all, they let, um, past contestants come back as an all-star and they, they went through the experience with an all-star. So they did it differently. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the same experience. And I often wonder, I mean, maybe that just wasn't going to be um, her. If she'd gotten through, maybe that wouldn't have been the best way to represent what she could do. Right. And, you know, maybe you weren't ready, Jensen. Maybe just mentally, you just weren't quite ready. And maybe it's just everything happens for a reason. So let's figure out what that is. Let's regroup. And we've always told our girls they can't bury their talents, right? And I'm like, you have a gift and a talent. You have to do this. And um, I, I mean, I pretty much was like, your dad and I will be super disappointed if you don't, because you have to at least give it another try. And so she did. And of course she got on the show. Back in your head, you weren't like, oh, what if I'm pushing her to do this? And we go through the heartbreak again. You weren't. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've always just been kind of like a person like, you'll be okay. You know, even if you fail again, it's going to be okay. It's not like. <laughs> this is the end all be all. But, um, I knew she, I knew she, 
possessed the talent and the skill. I knew that America would love her. So I was like, you, you have to at least give it another try. And so she did. And then she got on and she got second that season. And it was such a, you know, a, a great experience for her. So I do think a lot of people don't take risks or don't do things because they're afraid of failure. And I get that. I do. I get that all the time. Um, But I also just think sometimes you just have to go for it, you know, and encourage your kids to go for things that might seem uh, a little out of reach or just to give it a go because failure is not a bad thing either because life lessons are learned by failing. And then to fail gracefully is probably the best thing you can ever learn in your life is to fail, but understand that, you know, you're not always going to get what you want and you're not always, things aren't always going to turn out the way you want them to. And I think that's a good thing for um, kids to learn these days is that it's okay to fail and it's okay to lose. It's okay to not be the best and it's okay to be happy for people who succeed. And that's always been a big thing in our family too, is like, be happy for others because there's room in this world for all of us to do great things. We don't, you know, we need to be happy for others when they succeed. So yeah. I think females sometimes can especially have a, a hard time with that. Yeah. You know, enough light for everyone to shine. There is, there's so, there's so much success to be had out there and so many things that people can do. So it's like, just be happy for other people. And if it didn't happen for you this time, then maybe it's just not your time. So your third daughter took a path that was more similar to yours and ended yes. up going into to medicine. Was there yeah. a part of me that was kind of relieved? Okay. One of the four is going to do something, not dance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's, that's okay. No, with uh, Brinley was um, a r- actually really great dancer too. Like same level, same competing, winning competitions, doing everything. Um, she's a little bit more reserved. Her personality is a little bit more reserved. She's a little bit more, she's very good at school. Um, she went, actually went down when Lindsay was during one of se- the seasons, she actually went and lived with Lindsay in LA for like three months and pursued modeling and went to some auditions and she had success. She did some, she modeled for Nike. She had a couple of dance jobs, but she didn't love it. And mm-hmm. she didn't love the way she felt. She wasn't happy. She just told me, I don't, I just don't think I'm cut out for this. I don't really like this life because it is a tough life. It's a really mm-hmm. tough life. And she said, I just kind of want to go home and go to nursing school. That's kind of what she wanted to do. And I was like, great, good for you. So she went, you know, went to school and got her, did a, you know, fast nursing degree, got like just buckled down and took all these credits and worked so hard. And she's just amazing in her own right too, because she's like, just the things she's accomplished at such an age, young age have been really impressive too. And then we get to the baby of the family, Riley, who grew up at a dance studio, you know, just grew up her entire life. No way. (laughs) Yeah. Watching it, living it, traveling with us. Um, at age nine, she was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be on dance. I'm going to be a pro like my sister on Dance with the Stars. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, there's a lot of things that need to happen between now and then. And she was always just like, this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, to her credit, by the time she came along, we had it dialed in. Like we knew exactly what, what, um, coaching achieved results and where to go and who to ask and what to wear and what competitions to go to. And, like we were a machine by then and she got to just kind of like flow through the process, which we were a little bit more trial and error with the older two because yeah. but by the time she came along and then she also just had her sisters to look up to and um, watch them and how they handled the stress and the success mm-hmm. and the good and the bad. Cause it's, it, there was just as high as the highs, the lows are the lows and you just, they all are there and you have to deal with them. And she watched them, do that. And I think that really has helped her mold her to be the person that she is tonight today, because she was able to watch all of them go through it and hear the stories and understand, okay, that's how this works. And, you know, there was no surprises for her. So yeah, she, she did juniors with Lindsay when she was 13. And the crazy thing is while she was filming juniors, her sister was competing on. So you think you can dance and they were being filmed in the same exact building in West Hollywood. And I was going back and forth from, there was one night where they were, they literally were filming at not at the exact same time, but like one right after another. So I literally was like back and forth, back and forth. It was the most crazy surreal experience 
to just be like, I cannot believe I have two children competing on two television shows at the same time. And I'm, you know, here for, and I'm able to be here for both of them, which what a blessing that I was able to like. That was a real pinch me surreal moment, but that that in the thick of it, we were just doing it. And then after, I'm just like, I cannot believe we just spent the entire summer, both girls filming separate TV shows and then Lindsay's mentoring Riley on one. Oh, it was, it was some of the best, greatest memories of my life, but just so surreal. And so, and yeah, I, starting all this, I don't know that I ever thought it would get to that point, but wow, I'm so grateful that it did because it's been so fun. So fun. Is we are so blessed. People, um, the girls compared, I know particularly with Riley and Lindsay and both getting on at 18 as pros on the show and, and some of that, is that flattering and a compliment or do you kind of wish people would see each of them as their own dancer and personality? And Yeah, it's been, it's been kind of interesting. I mean, honestly, like when Riley was announced as a pro last fall, um, there was quite a bit of hate online that it was like a nepotism, you know, oh, kind yeah. of a, um, oh, she got that job because of her sister. She, mm -hmm. um, the only reason why she's doing this is because she's Lindsay's little sister. And um, the funny thing is, is when, when I heard that and when we were talking about it, I'm like, well, to me, that's a huge compliment because <laughs> that just means that Lindsay did so well at her job. That they're willing, they understand that like Riley's cut from the same cloth and they, the, produ the producers of Dancing with the Stars know what they're getting when they hired Riley because Lindsay was such an exemplary employee and did such an amazing job on that show. Not just dancer, but person and her ability to handle stress and her ability to work with other people. Because that job is, is not about, not just about the dancing at all. That show is so multifaceted. There's so many things that go into it that people just don't see. If nepotism was all that was involved, I had two other daughters that probably would have loved to just been handed a job on Dancing with the Stars, yeah. and they didn't. I mean, so Jensen true. never, Jensen never got the opportunity to dance with the stars. The timing, it just wasn't. The timing just was never right, and mm -hmm. I, they were never going to put Lindsay and Jensen on the same season because at that time they also had Whitney, who was from Utah, very similar. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it just never worked out. And, you know, that was difficult and she was frustrated, but if nepotism was all it took, then my other two daughters would have also been on the show, but Riley was like groomed and ready to go. She, she was a bit young. Um, initially we kind of thought maybe they'd put her on the troop, but we found out when she did her interview that they weren't having a troop. And so when she got the call to be a pro, we were, we were floored because you know, that is a lot for an 18 year old girl to oh, take on. Sure. Yeah. It's, and you had already walked that road with Lindsay being so young. Yeah. Then, yeah. Lindsay. Yeah. And it was, it was, it took Lindsay a few years to like figure it out. How often did you go out to LA for, to oh, get to I was the there every shows? week. I was oh, every there. week? Yeah. So, um, they put, they put Riley up in a, in an apartment mm -hmm. and it had two bedrooms and we were there almost the entire time. I, I wouldn't stay the entire week. I would come home for a few days and go back down. I mean, we live in Salt Lake. So flight to LA is like an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Super easy. Um, back and forth, back and forth. The girls would come back and they had their babies. They'd come back and forth. I mean, it was just, we were all just so excited and it was so fun. And I didn't have any, when Lindsay was on the show, I didn't really have the luxury to go down as much because I still had little kids at home that needed yeah. mom. So I would go, but not as much. But with Riley, I'm like, oh, I'm, Why not? <laughs> yeah, let's go. You know, and I'd be like, just bring my grandbabies down to LA so I can see them down here. But yeah, I was there, um, you know, just trying to make the other parts of um, her life a little bit easier so she could focus on her job, you know, mm -hmm. groceries, laundry. Um, Riley's a type one diabetic. So, I mean, that's like a whole other job in and of itself, just getting the supplies and making sure she has the right medication and snacks. And I mean, it, it it's a lot for her to handle too. So I, I would always be down there kind of delivering, you know, prescriptions and, you know, different things she needed. It was so fun. And to see how happy my girls were for their little sister, like that's mm. the one thing about my girls is that there wasn't a ton of jealousy growing up. They don't, they don't compete with one another. They don't compare themselves to one another. And it's very rare because I've, 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 I've heard from other moms that have girls like, how do you keep them from like, you know, 
like, how do they get along so well? And why are they, how are they such good friends? They truly are. I mean, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's just fake. They're probably fighting. You know, they just pretend that they really are so supportive of of, of one another and so kind and loving to each other. And that's, as a parent, that is like, that's a better comp- accomplishment than any of the dancing or any of the accolades. It's like the fact that they're all friends and they're all there for each other and they love each other and they, they hang out when I'm not even around and they do things for each other that I don't even know about. I'll hear about it after the fact, you know, little favors. And it's, that's, that's really special. That's every mom's dream right yeah, there. It so really is. No I mean, what, I just, or what their life story is, is for the siblings to be close to love Yeah. Each other. You've nurtured something right in the household, that's for sure. We've had some fun matchups and pairings. Have you had a favorite over the years that you loved seeing Lindsay dance with, or of course now Riley? But oh my gosh, yes. I mean, Lindsay's had so many great partners that have yeah. been great for different reasons. Um, I mean, obviously, she won with Jordan Fisher, and that season was just magical because every week they were so good. And I, I mean, it was just nice to see her go out and be able to dance at her full potential with mm-hmm. the partner. Cause she, he was really the only partner she had that had dance experience like that. Mm-hmm. Everyone else was like, it was, it was a work and a struggle. And so, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and she had some great athletes that worked hard, but just, you know, they just weren't like elegant dancers, but yeah. she was able to have success with a lot of people. Cause she's a really good teacher She's a really patient. She's really kind. The one that comes to mind that at first everybody was just like, poor Lindsay is when she was paired with Sean Spicer. Oh, yes. Because not only was he an older gentleman that had never danced and wasn't even really an athletic type of guy, you know, just he also came with all the political backlash of the time and all of that drama. And people were like calling on her to quit her job. Like, how can you, how can you do that job knowing that he, you know, She's like, well, are you crazy? I'm not going to quit my job. This is the greatest job I'm on the planet. Like I, and I don't, I can't, I'm under contract. You can't just quit. It was funny how people would be like, you should quit and not show up to rehearsal tomorrow. And she's like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> so, but he was, you know, such, such an amazing, sweet man. And there's been some things that have happened since the show that he's helped our family with some, I mean, one, one being, I hope I don't cry while I tell this story, but one being Lindsay's mother-in-law passed away during that season and she was in Africa and where she, she got ill in Africa and passed away in Africa. And the, the family was having a hard time getting her home because there's all this red tape and, and it was weeks and weeks and money and extortion. You know, they were trying to get the dad to pay all this fees and money. And, um, Sean had called Lindsay several times to see how she was doing. She had to take a break from the show because it was in the middle of the season that her mother-in-law died. And, Mm -hmm. She kind of just explained to him that she was having this problem and he was actually working at the Pentagon at the time and was able to like make it happen so that they could get her mother-in-law's body home like within a week. So, I mean, I don't think America ever got to really appreciate that about him, but there's so many stories that Lindsay can tell about her partners that are just so heartwarming and sweet and the relationship she's developed with all of them has just been really special. And, and it's such that show is so amazing in that it brings two people together that probably would have never crossed paths in their lives. And then they, right, right. Then they become really close. They spend all this time together and then they, you know, become part of each other's lives. What would you say have been some of the downsides of having your children end up in the public eye the way that the way that they are and have been? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would have to just say that the negative comments on social media Mm-hmm. the misperceptions of who they are and what they are. Um, I, when Lindsay first started doing, when Lindsay was first on So You Think You Can Dance, Instagram was just getting started, right? It wasn't a very big platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, and I feel like people have gotten more hateful. It's, it's amazing to me. And I've, I've come to realize for the most part, these people just want attention. It's hard for me to sit and read those comments. And as a mom, I just, Oh my gosh, I so badly want to get involved and I don't because that's you talk about the mama bear coming out. That'll yeah, do that. I'm like, That'll you know, when they it. say something bad about my child, it's like, and it's not about her. I don't care if they say she's a bad dancer, but when yeah. they start to like knock her character and what kind of person mm-hmm. she is, um, it, yeah, it's very hard, but I just, I don't, I don't engage because here's the thing. It doesn't, it just makes it worse. What has it been like for you to see your girls become moms? 
oh my gosh, the greatest thing ever. Like, you know, I've heard my whole life that being a grandparent is the greatest thing ever. Just wait till you have grandbabies and just wait, you know, and I'm like, really? Cause I'm still raising kids and I'm yeah. like, I'm kind of ready for some peace and quiet, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. It is the greatest thing ever. The watching my girls be moms is just the greatest joy and reward I could have ever asked for because it is just the pure love. It's like watching your baby be a mom and watching her have a baby is just, oh, it's so heartwarming. And and grandchildren just like bring so much joy to our lives. I mean, we are now empty nesters. I mean, Riley, when she's done with tour, she'll come home for a little bit, but she's not going to be here. She'll be yeah. back and forth to LA. She'll have other things she's doing. She'll have her things here, but she'll be out and about. Right. Um, empty nesters. But then like yesterday I do Sunday dinner every Sunday and you know, all the grandkids are here and I just sit and think, Oh my goodness, this is just the greatest thing ever. Uh, you know, they're way better moms than I was. They're mm -hmm. way more patient. I mean, I'm not kidding. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they are just more confident and more, um, I don't know more self-assured than maybe I was at that age. I don't know, but I just, I watch them in awe because they're so patient. They're so, they are, in, they are enjoying the journey. I feel like as a, sometimes when you're a young mom, you're just constantly, I can't wait till I put the kids down so I can clean up the house and the kind of thing. They're just enjoying it. But I think that's the advice I do give them the most is just enjoy it and don't sweat the small stuff and don't compare yourself to others and just enjoy the mess because really it's just toys on the floor. It's fine. You know? And as you and I both know, it'll be over quickly. Yeah. And you want, yeah, like I love it when my house gets all messed up now. I'm like, great. That means somebody was having fun and doing something cool. <laughs> I'm a very much a proponent of get help. Like mm. I'm like, you know what? You don't need to be cleaning your toilets right now. You've done that and, and treat yourself and you, you make sure you take care of yourself and then you'll be a better mom. And I have always felt that way about, you know, in my life, like just, you're a better mom if you're happy and you're taking care of yourself, then you will be a better mom. And um, is there a piece of advice that someone gave you that you think back on in raising your girls? Oh, I mean, I got lots of advice, lots of little bits of advice. But the thing that I um, felt like I had to learn and do the most in my life is to be able to tell my children I'm sorry when I was wrong or when I overreacted, when I was tired or frustrated, um, I, from a very young age, I was very willing to tell my children that I, that was wrong. Mom, mom lost her cool. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I yelled. I'm sorry. I said that. I'm sorry. I did this. Um, I think, um, that that's a really important thing for moms to do because, it's good for our kids to learn that, you know, we, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm sorry. The second thing is that, um, I really think it's important to not try to protect your children from, um, things that, you know, might hurt their feelings or might like failure. Like we talked about, like, yeah, yeah. you know, some parents yeah. don't ever want their children to feel failure. So they hover around them and try to, um, try to, uh, help them avoid anything stressful or painful or hard. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I never did that. We let our children figure things out and learn to solve their own problems, which I think is huge. Cause I do think sometimes parents try to, um, you know, hover yeah. over their children and keep them, you know, and I think that that might do them a disservice because at some point in time, they're going to be adults and they're going to need to handle the hard things. And if they don't have the skills from, being younger, they're not going to be able to do it. So what does the Arnold family group text look like? Oh, it's hilarious. It's so good. So there's one, there's a, there's an all girl one. There's one okay. with the girls and the dad. And then there's one with all the, the husbands and the dad. And, <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I'll just share one with you. Okay. Jensen's husband last night sent a meme to the group chat, which was of three guys and one of them and under the meme, it was said, this is Lindsay Arnold. If she had short hair and the guy, it was a side profile and it literally looked like Lindsay, but it was this guy. I mean, it's the funniest picture. And it, Jensen's husband sends it to the group chat, making fun of Lindsay. And we all just like erupt. <laughs> She's the first one to be like, you know, 
we are a very playful, like teasing family. We tease each other a lot. We mm -hmm. find humor in everything. I think that's also a really important thing to do in family. Is just, you know, Riley's now the youngest, the only single one. And so she has these three brother-in-laws that are full, full brother mode with her teasing, <laughs> overprotective, um, telling her what they think about everything she's doing. And I love it because it's like, great. She didn't have brothers. I grew up with three brothers, so I know what it's like to have brothers and she didn't. So I'm glad they're filling that role for her because it's a very important part of life to take yeah. a, take a tease, you know, <laughs> be able to, and to be able to dish it out and to take it. I think that's really important too. Exactly. Yeah. A whole life lesson there. Well, I'd love getting to talk to you. I know. This has been so fun. I'm so excited that we were able to make it work. Yeah, it worked out great. And so yeah. I'm just excited about, um, you know, watching the season and now feeling a personal connection. Like I know yes. everybody's family and getting to connect with you. And what's, yeah. what are you most excited about what's coming up next for the family? Well, so Brinley's about to have another baby. So that's obviously very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we always do some really fun family vacations in the summer. We take our family to Lake Powell every year, which is everyone's favorite. Yeah. And then Riley will be getting ready to go back for Dance with Stars, hopefully. I mean, they don't know they have the job until like right before the show mm -hmm. starts, they get the call. Um, but I'm optimistic that that will work out for her. We've been approached by a network to do a, a show about our family. We'll see if that pans out. I don't know. Would you be open to it? I would, as long as it's not a scripted, um, as long as they allow us to just live our lives and be mm -hmm. the boring people that we are. Because <laughs> I i don't have any interest in, you know, a Real Housewives, you know, take on our family where they're, you know, where it's scripted and they're interjecting and asking us to have conflict. I'm not interested in doing that for sure. Yeah. Well, it sounds like with your family, it's just fun enough and entertaining enough that yeah. And I think people, I think people, you know, kind of uh, that, that appeals to them. They don't necessarily want to see yeah. drama all the time, you know? So, so we'll see if that ever works out, but yeah, just some things that are kind of in the works that we're just like, whatever. But in the meantime, we just live our lives and get together and laugh and have fun and, you know, just enjoy one another. So, 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 so lucky, so lucky. <laughs> Okay, I will definitely be tuning into that reality TV show. We hope you've enjoyed this series with moms in the reality TV world. In case you missed them, you can go back and listen from Survivor, Desperate Housewives, Big Brother. We have had a lot of fun with this series. If you have an idea for an episode, drop us an email by visiting gotitfrommamamapodcast.com. We'd love to say hello. Have a great week, everybody.